Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Clement Imber. A little history of MIC. MIC started in 1974 um, purely as a, an institution to support the manufacturing industry by making tools and dyes. Um, because a, a tool and dye maker is a very um, precise profession, we had to get people from, mainly from Europe, to train our locals here in tool and dye making. And it took a number of years. So MIC was accustomed to, to training from the, from the word go. But 20 years later, in 1994, we were asked by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, it started by an invitation from Ferrostal, one of the companies involved in methanol in Trinidad and Tobago, invited the then Prime Minister and Professor Julian to Germany to see what German technical training is all about. And uh, they were very impressed, and MIC was asked to <coughs> sorry, partner with the Germans to deliver a similar type program. So we got into training in, um, in a greater way in 1994. Several years later, we were asked again by the government to start a program for lower level craft for the construction trades. Um, that is hype. And uh, a few years later, when UTT subsumed the technical institutes, the two major technical institutes, as San Fernando Technical Institute and John S. Donaldson Technical Institute in Port of Spain, we were asked to, to deal again with all the areas that UTT were not dealing with. UTT was only dealing with the technician programs, but there are a lot of other programs, a host of other programs that are being done at, at the craft and slightly higher level, going up the technician level, in John D. and San Fernando Tech. So things even like jewelry making, which we still do, book binding, which we still do, um, certain aspects of culinary arts and so on. So MIC is involved in a, a diverse um, set of training programs that start at the very high level of the master craftsman, which is at the tertiary level. The master craftsman is considered, uh, if you like, a practical engineer in Germany. And we go lower down to height, where literally we people who have sort of dropped out of school, if you like, where we train them in the construction trades. And there are many people who have started there at that level one and have gone much further in those trades and, and other things. So that gives you a background of MIC, and that really tells you why MIC was, was best placed and best suited to conduct this particular program. I say conduct, that is to, to host the program the program was really conducted, of course, by Professor Andrew Ramroop and uh, his crew. But to host the program and to, to give the kind of support that we could give to a program to ensure that we had a well-rounded student. So MIC doesn't only provide the infrastructure, but MIC also provides some other skills, the sort of complementary skills to the core skills of, of bespoke tailoring. And that would be things like communication um, skills, life skills, mathematics and related science. I say related science because bespoke tailoring is a science and there is not just the mathematics but they have to, to understand geometry to an extent because they are involved in um, making shapes. So we were, were very, um, I would say, pleased to, um, to accept the offer from the Ministry of, of, of Trade and Industry. And I, um, I deliberately didn't give you salutations at the beginning. Everybody does that. So I will give you as I go along and hope I don't take more than my five minutes. So I just mentioned the, the minister 
of Trade and Industry, Senator the Honorable Paula Gopiskun, and she was the one who, I, I don't want to say insisted, I don't want to say pleaded, but something in between. Pick any, any verb that you want in between instructing and pleading. And uh, MIC, as I say, was very pleased to, to host um, Professor Ramroop. I, um, I, did, I did my master's degree in England, and uh, it wasn't very far from London. I was 15 miles away from London in a town called Uxbridge. And uh, I would go to London almost every, um, every weekend. And uh, there were these famous streets in London. You know, if you say Downing Street, everybody thinks number 10. If you say Fleet Street, everybody thinks and when you say Savile Row, you don't have to say anything else. And uh, Professor Ramroop, the maestro, his academy is called Savile Row Academy. So we don't have to say anything else. He will speak more about it and tell you a bit more what bespoke tailoring is about. I remember, the only bespoke tailor I remember in Trinidad and Tobago, I'm sure there are others, was the former mayor of Port of Spain, Fitz Blackman. He had a, an establishment on Abercrombie Street, I think it was, and you saw that term there, bespoke, the bespoke tailor. I didn't know what that meant. I asked my father, and my father did his law studies in England, so he told me that this is when the cloth in the old days that certain high class tailors used was spoken for. So you came to this tailor and you saw this, what we used to call in, 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 in the young days a pants length or a suit length, and you tell you, no, 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 that is spoken for. So that is a bespoke tailor who makes, of course, clothes specially for, for individuals. Doesn't matter what shape you are, if you if, if, if you're lean this way and you're, or you bend that way, they will, um, they will take care of, of any one of these unsymmetrical shapes of the human form. So without um, going any further, I would like to, to mention the few other distinguished guests I was told to mention. They didn't give me a salutation list, but that's all right. They told me, and I have a good enough memory. So we have the Deputy British High Commissioner who I met, and uh, I was told she's over there. So when I met this lady, as soon as she opened her mouth, I said, yeah, yeah, you have to be the deputy British High Commission. The English accent came out. As I said, I, I studied in England and, and did other things in England also. So this is um, the deputy British High Commissioner, Ms. Caroline Alcock. And uh, of course, I shouldn't um, leave out the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Ms. Frances Signore, she has a nice French name like me. And I insisted to the MCs that they call me Imbert, because if they had called me Imbert, I wonder I might have left. <laughs> so, <laughs> my name is French, is Imbert. So, the rest of you know that now, yeah? And uh, I was told we also have, uh, I was given his card, Serge Lavrov. I hope I've pronounced his name properly. He is the Ambassador from South Africa. So, welcome, sir. From. France. Huh? France. It's France? Yeah. <laughs> I heard South Africa over there, but I met, you, I met you more than once, sir. My apologies. And I'm boasting that I'm French. <laughs> My apologies. I, I will make it up to you at, uh, at some future date, maybe very soon. From France. And his lovely wife there, well, I, I, I like that. She corrected me right away. So there we have it. I don't think there are, there, oh yes, there's Calvin Bijou. How could I forget Calvin Bijou? He, if you look at the back of your, or, or the front, whichever one, the front of your program, you'll see he's chairman of, of um, Creative TT and uh, Fashion TT, which is one of the four sponsors, as you saw there, um, MIC, of, of course, being one. Is, um, is one of the, of, of the three 
sort of subsidiary companies. So one more person I would not like to leave out, I have mentioned Professor Ramo Paredi. I'd like to mention um, Ian McIntosh. He is the GM of training in MIC, and he's the one who has been personally very supportive of this program. And normally when people have a problem, they call me. Well, Mr. Ramrup didn't have to call me once to hear of this program, Mr. McIntosh, I think. So thank you very much. I believe we have a show. I saw some models at the back there. Enjoy the show. If I missed out anybody, let me just say all other protocols observed. And thank you very much. <laughs>